a toxic wind has been blowing into our world for several months now. This poison has kept us shuttered in our homes and hospitals. Death is in the air. We are afraid. We are anxious about the uncertainty of it all. We can only keep vigil and wait for this messenger of death to pass us over. As it was with the ancient Israelites in Egypt awaiting their deliverance, as it was with the disciples after Calvary, whose doors and hearts were bolted out of fear, so it is with us now. Tonight, then, let us keep vigil. We shall ask for the grace of patience in this time of waiting. We will gather around the fire of this Easter candle to do two things, tell stories and share dreams with each other. Stories from the past and present, dreams for the future. We've been telling stories and sharing dreams for centuries, every year, on this night of nights. And so tonight, and for many more nights after this, we will come around this Easter fire to be warmed by stories and dreams. The stories we've heard tonight are stories of creation, temptation, and liberation and recreation. In between creation and recreation, there is defeat, there is exile, there is frustration. They are ancient stories, but they come to life in books we have read, even in movies we have seen. They are stories that have been played out in history. They are stories we've seen in our own lives. They are stories about beginnings and endings creation and redemption, and all manner of trials and failures in between. My own father likes to tell the story of how I got out of my mother's womb. You know, I'm the firstborn. Apparently, my mother was in labor from Thursday to Saturday. Yes, I don't know what that means, but I guess that must have been painful. This was a time before, I guess, cesarean sections. I just could not get out of my mother's womb because of my big head, they said. I had a big head. I had to be forcept out, you know, you know, forceps. That's why I had marks of forceps and I, my head. And this, my father tells me, he would show this graphically to us, imitating the posture of the doctor who was pulling and pulling, like he was pulling a horse, I guess. He was pulling and pulling while he leveraged himself against the delivery table. That's one story of my creation. I could have remained in my mother's womb and shriveled inside like a rotten mango were it not for the heroic pushing of my mother and the creative pulling of the doctor. We are born never alone. We are born from the risks taken by those who love us, from the pain and sacrifice of others. We are born out of love, a love that is patient and enduring. Surely we have our own stories about beginnings and endings and all sorts of subject matter in between. And we shall befriend our memory and retrieve our journal or photos or letter collections, digital or otherwise, if only to help us remember and to retell our stories to ourselves and to one another. Tonight and for the coming days, I hope, we can share our stories as sequels to these grand stories of creation and recreation and everything 
in between. Let this be our gospel stories. The Easter fire is here to remind us that people of faith have been telling these stories for centuries, remembering them for each other, to warm their hearts and ward off the darkness and keep close to God. The Easter fire is here to assure us of the presence of Christ in these stories of our lives and how our stories will always be treasured by God. If there are stories to tell around this Easter fire, there are also dreams to be shared. If stories are stories of creation and recreation, our dreams can be dreams of co-creation, of creating with the Holy Spirit in the renewal of the earth. That is the gift of Easter, this shared power with God in renewing the face of the earth. When I see videos of infants getting used to wearing masks, I tell myself this is not the kind of world we are supposed to leave them. When I hear of immunity passports, passports being developed post-quarantine to allow people to move through checkpoints, I know this cannot be God's dream for creation. Long before this pandemic struck us, we have already been turning inward and suspicious of the stranger and anyone not like us. In this time of our prolonged Easter vigil, we will be humble enough to admit that we cannot just go back to the way things were before COVID-19. It cannot be just business as usual. These have been extraordinary times, and so we will be bold enough to ask for extraordinary graces of personal and collective conversion. Father Rene Havellana tells us here at the Jesuit residence that the iridescent blue of the Kingfisher is now back on campus. Even dragonflies, the earth itself, is going through some form of Sabbath and is renewing itself. We can rebuild, and yes, we will rebuild, but this time we will rebuild with nature again. Foolishly and dangerously, we have discarded creation in our desire for material prosperity and growth. If there is any lesson to be learned about biology, it is that we know so little. We do well, therefore, to rein in that Promethean pride and be more cautious about our double-edged tools, especially when it comes to the building blocks of life. In this new world, post-COVID-19, we will need to prescribe a more aggressive dose of reverence, reverence, reverence for life. When we were asked to stay at home, we realized again that there were many of our own, our own people who did not have any homes. When we started to distribute food packs to communities along with other groups, we discovered that there were countless others who were not getting relief. We have numbered lists of drug addicts. We cannot even list those of us who are without homes. They are faceless and abandoned. We have discarded the social margins in our calculus of economic growth and progress. We can rebuild our economy again, bearing in these blueprints a new list, a list this time of the faceless and nameless in our midst. I look at our empty campus now, and imagine what life will be like post-quarantine. It will not be the same. We can rebuild our institutions and systems to be more responsive and agile. We need to do this especially for our health and social welfare and educational systems. 
We can rebuild from the ruins. We can rebuild with one another, with our young ones who can see visions of this new future world. We can rebuild with our old ones who can dream dreams from the wealth of tradition and experience. I invite you to dream of what this new world can and must be when we emerge from quarantine. Share these dreams with one another, with the world, and let these dreams be blessed by Easter fire, by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Lastly, let us pray for courage. It is hard to prove the resurrection, but one proof, it's not a real proof, is this. Before the resurrection, you had a group of, pathetic group of frightened men who scattered. They were not there in Calvary, except for one, and the women. And yet, somehow, after the resurrection, this pathetic group of cowardly men were transformed. They became brave. They were emboldened. Something happened. Someone happened to their lives. You'd think that this is something that would just die down. But countless men and women have looked death in the eye have been brave because of this Easter gift of hope, of boldness, of love. Do we know what we're really asking if we ask the Lord to send out His Spirit to renew the face of the earth? Do we really think that the Spirit can do just that without wounds being inflicted, without crosses being borne on, on our shoulders? Will the world and our hearts just renew themselves without resistance? We ask for the grace of boldness. Boldness for this conversion, personal and collective. So that we can, with the poet John Donne, look death in the eye and tell death, Death, you be not proud. Though some have called thee mighty and dreadful, for thou art not so. And death shall be no more. Death, thou shalt die. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful. Kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth.